Hello everyone, this is Peter, back again with another colouring book review. I hope you're enjoying my series, I'm certainly enjoying making them, and I have many colouring books lined up which I am eager to review for you. Today we're going to look at Enchanted Forest by Joanna Basford. This is the second book in Joanna's series of colouring books. Her first one, Secret Garden, has been extraordinarily popular and with good reason. It's an excellent book, but we'll look at this one for today. She does have another one coming up um, due in October, Lost Ocean, and that's certainly on my colouring book list. Uh, now, for today, this book, Enchanted Forest, was printed this year, 2015, um, it, in London. It's been so popular, this is actually the sixth print run that I've got here. Um, and without further ado, we're going to have a look. Now, if I open up the cover here, the first thing you'll notice is it's got this dust cover which opens up and I can actually take off the book entirely and it's got a massive print on it. Ah, if I run through it and I've seen this one coloured and it's it's quite spectacular. Don't know if I'm keen to do it myself. There's also the inner cover which is on brown paper. By the way, little tip, white pencil is great on brown paper if, you, if you're planning to do this. Now I'll just fold it, pop this out of the way. Okay, and we'll just look at it like this. A bit easier to turn. Okay, this is the first page that I've completed. Now I've actually used the Derwin Artist pencils for this. Derwin Artist pencils are lovely pencils, but they are very hard cored and they require a, a very deft and a patient hand to use. I've got a full set of 72 here. Um, I'll show you one of the trays. I'm very lucky enough to have a wooden set. These are about 25 maybe 28 years old these pencils and I just love them but wouldn't recommend them for coloring in simply because you need a lot of patience with them and you do a lot of layering uh, but as you can see you can get gorgeous results with them quite easily there are artist quality pencils now this next page I've done with my Faber Castell Polychromis. As if you've been following me, you know that I absolutely love these pencils, and it's probably what I'll be using for most of this book. This book has got this nice um, nameplate, and I've noticed quite a few books have these. A great idea. Now I'll move this across. The next page. Uh, as you can see, it's another hidden object book where you've got little hidden animals to find. A bit, adds a bit of fun to it and starts off with a map. This book is actually a kind of a story in picture form where you're on a journey to go to a magic castle through an enchanted forest to see what's inside. And you've got to find little keys along the way. There's nine key cards hidden throughout the book. And one of the last pages, you draw the symbols that you found on the key cards to unlock the castle so you can go in and see what's inside. I've chosen to do this picture with limited palette, and I think to give it a, a map-like look. I've seen this one done in full colour many times as well, and it looks just as good. Okay, another picture of these again with um, polychromous pencils. I must say, the paper in this book is absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic i believe the first print run of a secret garden there was some problems with the paper not being very good with pencils it was hard to layer on it would peel up joanna has certainly had moved to a different publisher with her books and and subsequent issues of a secret garden are, are high quality paper and i've certainly got no complaints about this paper it's a slightly off white creamy color but i think it works for the subject matter mm -hmm. and this and the pencils show up beautiful and bright on it anyway Lovely, easy to use. The pencils just flow down onto it and you can get many layers of colour. Now, as you can see here, again, all polychromous pencils. You can get great results with any kind of artist quality pencils or even good quality student pencils as well. A lot of fun doing this. It took me two weeks. It was a huge project, but I really enjoyed doing it. I'm looking forward to doing more of these double pages in this book. Now, if you're wondering how I go about my artwork, sometimes I just wing it, but sometimes I plan the colours first. And here I've got my colour plan for this picture of the owl here, um, which I wanted to have kind of like a little frosty cold look, so I've picked cool shades of colours. 
Uh, something you might like to think about trying if you know you want something a little bit more advanced but you can have just as much fun and create something just as nice by winging it and picking things as you go along. Now I haven't done, oh, I've done one more thing in this book so a lot of this now will just be showing you the variety of pictures available. I will say one problem um, is the spine. You really have to hold the page apart to get into that little bit but I find that's a common problem with a lot of books that are they colour in with that have pictures that go right to the spine. Now at the back of this book and we'll get to it I have got the last page which I use for um, testing various mediums. Ah, here's another piece that I've done. This is the other one. Uh, this is actually the first piece I made in this book and I've coloured in with a variety of different um, pencils. I've used some polychromas here, I've used some of the um, Do and Artist pencils and I've tried a few some of the budget brand pencils on this one just to see and as you can see you can't tell the difference can you where is what if you're in real life you can spot the difference in the way the paint pencil laid down if you look close but standing back from it it just looks great anyway um, I've also used uh, Smiggles gel pens on here it's a bit hard to see on the camera but this is got a, a shimmer around the um, there you go I'll pick it up there if it's not too blurry um, and I use these gel pens now, there's a variety of different gel pens that you can use I found the Smiggles, uh, which is I think an Australian brand, um, is very juicy and you need to leave the book open for about 24 to 48 hours to let it dry. And even then for a while I was keeping a piece of paper in between the pages to stop them from smearing. Um, there's lots of different brands. The Smiggles ones are a bit expensive. Um, you can get just good results with, you know, this is just a $3 one that I got from a um, reject shop. Um, and there's lots of cheap ones and they do just as well. I wouldn't be too fussed getting expensive gel pens. They're all a bit much and muchness. The other thing you'll notice on here is the little sparkly stuff. Um, I used a Signo Uniball gel pens for that uh, because the Signo will just about write on anything. That's a really tough little gel pen. And I've got some nice sparkly effects on the page too. A very easy thing that you can do and it creates a nice result. Now to move on with the book, as time's getting on. The other thing you'll notice is I write little notes to myself in this book. There's another huge double page spread I'm looking forward to doing. So you've got a variety of simpler pictures and pictures that invite you. You could do something else. So there's nothing written on this book like the first one to invite you to do things. But here I was thinking of doing like an underground scene with earthworms and little mouse houses and stuff down here. You've got these very complex pictures, more like what I call a wallpaper style. We've got very simple ones where you could do a background if you wanted or leave it blank. Moving along. Nice variety. Oops, there's this is cool. I've seen this one done a lot of times. Um, and that one I'm looking forward to doing that one but then I like um, the houses and don't worry about the noise just then that's just one of my little dogs walking into the room and ah pushing my camera to one side there you go oh well as you can tell this is not professional this is just me doing my thing here ah, just correct the camera oh look at that he's going out again <laughs> there more notes on the side whenever I go through a book and I think of something I'd like to do with it I just write a few pencil notes on the to, to remind me when I get to that page think oh yeah I was going to do that with it I love this page another one I'm looking forward to I've got a thing about these double spreads they just like they scream at me to colour them again another thing that you can think of something creative to um, draw in between the little tunnels of the rabbit warren or you could leave it blank again as I always say your book do what you like with it this is so much fun. Frog, he's a very, very popular one to colour. I see a lot of his being coloured online. The river and the boat. Getting closer to the castle now. This wonderful skull. <laughs> oh, so many potential colouring um, possibilities with that. Oh. There are actually people out there who have finished this, believe it or not. 
um, this is a very dedicated colorist with a lot more time than I have. I am going to finish this book. I intend to because I just love it so much. But I'm looking at years, not months. <laughs> okay. Right. Now here, as I said before, here's the door with the keypad. And here's, I haven't shown you any of the cards and that's deliberate. That's up for you to discover. But here's the place where you put the nine symbols to open the door. And then you've got this very magic page. And this is a seller for me. This is so magnificent, but it's going to take me forever to draw. If I open it up, you'll find it's not actually normal pages, but two double pages folded in. Now, if you open it out, you have this amazing double dragon drawing. I'll just try and bring at least one of the dragons into focus. Both of them are the same, they're just opposite mirror images of each other. I've seen these done online as well, and I'm so looking forward to doing this myself. But probably a couple of years away, because I want to try and do the book in order. <laughs> and that is the end of the book. Next, you have the answers for the hidden objects. I won't show you those because you can find them yourself. And my last page, as I was going to say to you, is my test page. I like using the last page of any book as a test page so I can work out um, what the art materials are going to do and I don't end up with any yeah, mistakes. Uh, what I've tested on here to show you, uh, I can pick it up so you can see. Hopefully it won't get too blurry. I've got the Derwin Artists. I've only used them very lightly there. I've got the polychromist done in similar colours. I've got the Stadler fine liners, which are these guys. I've got a pack like this, and they do very well. None of the um, water-based um, uh, markers or textures, as we call them in Australia, have bled through at all. I'll show you that in a sec. I've got so they're the Stadlers over here. I tried the pit pens. The pit pens are. Another fantastic product made by Faber Castell. There are a range of markers. I'll show you one here. Okay, and they've got really lovely pointy tips. Pointy, pointy, pointy. Good for little detail. And I've got like a bucket load of them. I've just bought them as open stock. Now I've tried layering them two, three times, four times to see if they'll bleed through. And guess what? Not a single bit of bleed through. The bleed through you see there, and there is a tiny bit of bleed through just there. It's it's more of a shadow than a bleed proper bleed through, and that was from these guys. Um, Mikador stylus brushes. Uh, they look like this, which I bought. I find they tend to bleed through a lot of things, so I, I'm very careful with what I use them with, but they're still nice. Okay, what else have I got here? I've also used my Derwent Ink Tents, my beloved Derwent Ink Tents pencils that you often see me using in the Magical City. Uh, I was interested in how much buckling I would get with the paper. I'm very pleased to say not much at all. There's a little bit of buckling, but I would certainly be happy using the Ink Tents and watering down here. I used a lot of water on this bit, and it's hardly done anything at all. So, yep, go ahead, use your Derwent Ink Tents, you'll love them. Uh, the other things that's a small brand Monty Mart are uh, the shiny sort of uh, mica filled um, uh, markers. They're good. Connector pens got a funny little waxy sort of look to them, but I think it's because it was rubbing against this page and rubbing against the back page. But I think once again that they'll do fine. That's the Faber Castell connector pens as well. They again don't bleed through. Use them with confidence. And the other things are some cheaper pencils that I've bought. Um, that's the Marco Refines, which are a Chinese brand of pencil. They're lovely in this too. I've had a lot of um, good luck with them. Uh, here I've got um, Color Rush, uh, Monty Mart. I'm afraid those two are Australian brands. You probably won't get them overseas. Uh, cheap pencils, just cheap pencils, but fun. Uh, Polychromis, as you know, love them anyway. And your Prisma Colors do well in here too. Okay. And um, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this little view. And I'll get the little cover to finish with. I'll fold it back in. 
That was Joanna Bassford's Enchanted Forest. I hope you've enjoyed this and um, happy colouring. Mm -hmm.